just cause thy sore, the tumult of our life's wild restless sea. Day by day his clear voice sounded, saying, Christian, follow me. As of old Saint Andrew heard it, by the Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you. Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive us. be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Naiva, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Naiva, according to the word of the Lord. 
Naiva was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Naiva shall be overthrown. And the people of Naiva believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read in unison from Psalm 62. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales, they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increases, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice I have heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have had wives be as though they have none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me. And I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The gospel of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Christ. It's the abruptness, the rupture of this gospel that makes it so dang hard to preach. What are we supposed to find in this story? These first disciples called to follow Jesus. I'm struck by the drama of it, the complete overhaul of their lives. One minute, Andrew and his brother Simon are casting their nets, just another regular day at the office. And then out of nowhere, Jesus shows up with this strange invitation, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately, Mark tells us, immediately, Andrew and Simon Peter drop what they're doing Nets in a tangled, messy pile at the bottom of the boat. 
And then James and John too, they don't even look back immediately. Immediately they leave their dad and their coworkers. Immediately they follow. The kingdom is at hand. The time is now. Follow me. And it's a pretty inspiring story, truly. I mean, who can hear this story and not admire their chutzpah, the faithfulness of these brothers? But I'll confess, their example feels also a little unrealistic, a little inaccessible, a little bit out of reach. I mean, who would really do that? Leave everything behind. No preparation, no backup plan, no text home to tell our loved ones not to wait up. Follow me, Jesus says. And immediately for Andrew and Simon, for James and John, immediately everything is different. And it's true. Jesus' sudden breaking into their lives reveals something about God. God surprises us. God's grace interrupts in the moments we least expect it. Jesus walks up in a regular old workday with an invitation to reorient our lives. And God equips us. That's the thing that we forget about this story. The invitation and following the call, both are pure gift. Barbara Brown Taylor says it like this. She writes about this story. This story is not a story about us. It is a story about God and about God's ability not only to call us, but also to create us as people who are able to follow. Able to follow because we cannot take our eyes off the one who calls us. Because he interests us more than anything else in our lives. Because he seems to know what we hunger for. And because he seems to be food. In other words, Jesus is the one who acts. He doesn't wait for those brothers to deliberate. He doesn't give them a pros and cons list. And these disciples-to-be, you remember, they are not exceptionally faithful. They're not particularly deserving of this new role. And in fact, we'll see them get it wrong over and over, bumbling, making mistakes, even abandoning Jesus at the cross. Their faithfulness in this moment, their will to follow Jesus' call, is only by God's own gift of grace. And I say that because it lets me exhale a little bit. It takes the pressure off. Like I said, I think for most of us, that complete, sudden drop everything makes it hard to connect with this story. It's hard to imagine ourselves, or at least it's hard for me to imagine following Jesus in that way, that radical upending of everything that relinquishes all the outer signs of security, that just gets up and goes. But, When I remember that all faithfulness is a gift from God, now that's an invitation to keep my heart open, to always be listening, to always be expecting to hear how God calls me and equips me. Because don't get me wrong, that urgency we hear is real. Immediately, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom is now. Now. Now our world is hungry for the one who gives life. And when we least expect him, here comes Jesus who draws our eyes and our hearts to him, who compels us and who gives us what we need to follow. 
So I want to offer you today a different way into this story. What if we hear Jesus' call not as a call to leave everything behind, but rather a call to bring everything we have with us? Follow me, Jesus says, and I will make you fish for people. I'm really struck by Jesus' invitation, by the glimpse he gives Andrew and Simon of what their work will be. Because when we listen for just the dramatic rupture, for the all of a sudden total difference, we hear it that way. After all, they've never fished for people before. After all, Andrew and Simon, James and John, they knew nothing about preaching, about proclaiming or healing or teaching. But hear it this way. I'll make you fish for people. Now, they knew something about fishing. That is to say, they know about patience and tenacity, about their neighborhood and about the landscape, about hard work and working together. They know how to read the signs for where to cast the nets. They know about feeding people, about trusting that God will provide plenty. I'll make you fish for people, Jesus says. They bring plenty of experience, plenty of knowledge. When Jesus says, follow me, they turn all that good stuff in a new direction. I've seen Jesus gather a community this way with my very own eyes, multiple times. Maybe y'all have too, but I'll tell you my favorite story of seeing the kingdom at hand. Four and a half years ago, a family from Syria, a dad and a mom, a 12-year-old girl and a nine-year-old boy, this family arrived in Decatur, Georgia from a refugee camp in Jordan. And they arrived with need. The parents spoke no English, They needed a place to stay. They had no work. And the parish I served at the time would sponsor them, or maybe a better way to say it, they heard Jesus saying, follow me. And the one who called them gave them what they needed to follow. And it wasn't dramatic, not at first. But one parishioner had a carriage house that stood empty. Others had a table, some couches, Someone bought clean new bed sheets still in the crinkly plastic. Another was a lawyer who happened to have done some work on immigration. There were a couple of folks who spoke Arabic. A small group who gathered each week for English lessons, simple English lessons and strong coffee. Middle schoolers who were eager to show new friends around their campus and a mom who loved to shop for school supplies. A couple who happened to live far from their grandchildren and were glad for some kids to play games with, to dote on a little bit. And it wasn't always easy, it still isn't. Language barriers and mismatched expectations. But Jesus equips those he calls. An entrepreneur helped the parents build a business baking Syrian cookies. A writer in the neighborhood found ways to help publicize and share their story. Word got out in the neighborhood, and that community growing around that family continued to grow. Folks who weren't parishioners, who had absolutely no connection to the church, but who glimpsed who somehow sensed that the kingdom was at hand on this tree-lined street indicator, and they wanted to be a part of it. They wanted to offer whatever they had, time and expertise, an old car or some furniture, conversation and relationship. And would any of the over 40 people connected to this family have dropped their nets immediately and gone with Jesus? I don't know. 
But I know that five years later, if you ask any one of them, they would tell you that they have been turned in a different direction. Jesus calls Peter and Andrew, James and John. Jesus calls you and me in a way that continues to be our work a way that draws a solid line between what's come before and what will be, but points us in a new direction. Jesus turns us towards himself. You're still fishing, Jesus says, but now the kingdom is at hand. So bring all of those skills, all of those gifts and relationships and memories. Bring all of your experience and your talent and your resources and your stories. Bring all of who you are, Jesus says, and I will multiply it and bless it for the glory of God. Bring all you have to offer, Jesus says, and I will make good use of everything you carry into this moment. Everything you carry to this moment of hunger, of need, follow me, Jesus says. He promises us that he will make it possible. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially our new rector, the Reverend Jenna Strzak that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do what you will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Remembering Brenda Simpson, George Blake, Ruth Idle, Marshall Chiles, Cassie Cloud, Don Holt, the McGargy family, Mac Yost, Megan Freeman, Sam Belcher, Mac Taylor, Laura Wessel, Shannon Hames, Bob Falkender, Chris Higgins, John M., Doug Simpson, Leslie Enos, Pete Webb, Lee Bowen, Michael Hale, the Mrechek family, Victoria Wikiwicks. We pray for people in our community and around the world who are suffering from the pandemic, 
and from those suffering from its physical, emotional, mental, and economic consequences. And we pray also for those known and unknown who suffer from injustice as people of color. We have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially the Reverend Bert Daly, Francis Savini, Marion Edwards. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Don't go with me, I still will follow. Don't go with me, I still will follow. Don't go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Where he leads me, I'll Let us give thanks to God our Father for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us. For the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea, we thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ, we thank you, Lord. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends, we thank you, Lord. For minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve, we thank you, Lord. 
for health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play. We thank you, Lord. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity, we thank you, Lord. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice, we thank you, Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places, we thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we'll pray together this prayer for spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is celebrated and with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven gathered around your throne, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.